A few weeks ago, Tigger and Hamasian released Levitation 21, the lead single from his new album The Call Within, out August 28th. But a few days ago, he posted this image on Facebook, with the caption, the geometric shape of Levitation 21's rhythmic patterns. And oh boy, do I just wanna, I just wanna, I wanna sink my teeth into it. <laughs> if you haven't listened to the full song already, I highly recommend you do so before you continue with this video, because it's awesome and you're gonna need some context. I can only play like tiny snippets and replications for copyright reasons. In this video, we're gonna investigate this image, try to figure out what it means, and then we're gonna try to find the actual rhythms in the song that it's representing. Maybe this is a new series, I don't know. I'll call it Detective Holmes. I wish I had like a magnifying glass or like a stupid hat, uh, but I, I got nothing, so sorry about that. So where do we start? I think the first step is probably just to count all the nails that are around the ring. And we find 21. Levitation 21. Probably not a coincidence. And the song is actually written in 2116, as we'll see. So what if we let each nail on the ring be one of the 16th notes in a bar? If we're going with that, considering all these threads converge at this top point, I think it's probably a good first guess to label that count one. And then we'll label the rest going around clockwise. So maybe each of these threads is actually a complete loop that leaves from the top nail, travels clockwise around the circle, and then returns to the top nail. That means each of these loops could represent some sort of clave pattern. The song may be in 21, but it's not really very feasible to actually count all the way to 21 every measure. The numbers just get way too big. 15, 16, 17, 18. You can't really think through them at tempo. So what we tend to do is break those large numbers, like 21, up into smaller numbers. Say, 7 plus 7 plus 7, for example. Maybe each of these loops represents a different way that 21 is broken up in the song. Like this loop, if it was real, might represent 4 plus 4 plus 6 plus 2 plus 5. The next thing to observe is that there are 12 threads that interact with the top nail. Since we're assuming these are full loops, each loop has to enter and exit the nail. So what we have are 12 divided by 2, or 6 total loops to find. But this actually turns out to be wrong. If we look at this nail down here, it has three threads coming out of it. If we have one loop that enters and then exits, well then this thread here can't be part of a loop because it's just a dead end. There are two ways we could interpret this finding. One, uh, we're completely wrong. This, these aren't loops at all, they can start anywhere, they go anywhere else, and our whole interpretation is wrong. Or two, threads are shared. So multiple patterns can use the same thread. I don't know about you, but being wrong is really embarrassing. So uh, we're gonna go with interpretation number two. So we could have one loop that comes in and leaves this way, and another loop that comes in the same way and leaves the other way. And this isn't really a stretch. If I'm the artist making this image, I probably don't want ugly double lines everywhere. I'll just collapse them into one single line. But that means we actually have more than six total patterns to find. Okay, so now we have a pretty reasonable hypothesis for what we think this image is. Let's start digging into the real song, try to find some clave patterns, and we'll see if they map onto the image. Luckily, there's a lot of stuff to help us with this. Evan Marion, the bassist on the song, put out a video of himself playing through the song. And in the description, he has a breakdown of different parts of it and how he's feeling it. So let's start here. In the first part, he says he breaks the 21 into eight plus eight plus five. So let's go to our image and try to find this thread. The first one spans eight, so it should go from one to nine, and it's not there. Uh, are we wrong? Well, in a transcription by Han Zhao, they've notated this section as four plus four plus four plus four plus five, just breaking each of those eights into two fours. If we try to find that one instead, well, here it is, four, 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 five. It seems like we're on the right track. Let's do another. In the next part, Marion says he feels it in eight plus six plus seven. We already know this first eight doesn't exist on the wheel, so we'll just break that into four plus four. The six is accounted for right here. But for the seven, there is a thread here. But if we look at the transcription, it seems like that seven is regularly broken up into three plus four. So we're actually gonna use these threads here. Don't worry, this seven is accounted for later on. All 
All right, the next section here is after the breakdown and Marion breaks it into five plus five plus five plus six. If we look at the transcription, that seems to add up just fine. So we'll go ahead and add it to our ring. For his last section, he breaks it into six plus five plus five plus five. But for whatever reason, this doesn't seem to be on our image. But the really interesting part of this section is Arthur Knotek's drum part. On his hi-hat, he's playing these groupings of seven. But on top of that, he's playing a backbeat in groupings of six. Which is really, really pretty cool. This is one of those drum patterns I've been trying to tap on my legs, just like when I'm bored, and I still can't do it. Uh, it's hard. So here's all the patterns we've found so far, and we're making pretty good progress. At this point, I think it's pretty fair to say that our hypothesis was correct, and this is what the image is representing. But there's still a whole lot of threads left unrepresented. It would be no fun if Evan Marion's video gave us all the answers, so let's start digging into the transcription and see what other patterns we can find. Bar 25, for example. Marion says he feels this in 44445, and it totally makes sense how he could be feeling it this way. But if we look at the accent pattern, what I actually see here is 4 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5. If we look at our ring, boom, here it is. This is a four bar phrase, and that pattern takes up three bars of that phrase. Uh, no it doesn't. With all due respect, detective, that is some sloppy investigative work. What's actually going on in these four bars is much more interesting. Let's just listen to the phrase first. We start off right with four, four, three, two, three. But then I think this last count of five should be combined with the first four of the next bar, making a full phrase of nine that goes over the bar line. If we look at our ring, we do have this nice thread right here representing exactly that. I've been trying to find a match for this specific thread for a long time now, and I think this is it. I think I finally found it. Then after that, we have another grouping of four. And then instead of three, two, three, we have two, three, three which I think is just counted as a full group of eight, which is represented by this thread right here. And then we have one more grouping of five to finish off the bar and bring us back to one. So now we're halfway through the phrase. Bar three is pretty similar to bar one, where we have a four, a four, three, two, three, and then a five, which again, I think should be linked with the first four of the next bar. So we again have this grouping of nine that goes over the bar line. Then bar four is completely different. After that grouping of nine, we have a grouping of five, grouping of seven and another five to finish it off. So that means these four bars alone make up this shape. I think this is right. I've been struggling with these couple here uh, and I even recorded a whole thing about what they could be and some guesses for what they were, but I think this is what it is. I think I found them. Take it away, detective. There's one pattern where I want to work backwards because there's this really clear septagon, Se septagon, septagon, seven groupings of three. The only place I can find this kind of thing is in the intro melody. But the problem is these are groupings of three eighth notes, not 16th notes. Meaning if we're counting like everything else, this should be this pattern, the seven groupings of six and not this one. However, I can't find seven sets of three 16th notes anywhere in the song, and I think it might be fair to say this intro is sort of in half time. Han Zhao has even notated it that kind of way, in 21.8 instead of 21.16. So I am going to attribute this septagon to the intro pattern, maybe with some sort of little asterisk or something. I could be totally wrong. I could just completely be missing the real pattern somewhere else. If that's the case and you find it somewhere else, definitely let me know in the comments. But so far we've done a pretty good job and found matches for almost all the threads. But I do have a confession to make. That's all the patterns I could find. But I do have some guesses for where the other guys might be hiding. I think they must be in the breakdown in the middle of the song. Which is kind of weird because I interpret this as being just played freely out of time. But it may not be. It could be more metered than I'm giving it credit. Like in bars where he kind of alternates between two chords, 
he plays the first chord slightly shorter than the second chord, which could create a shape like this. And every now and then there's a chord that's pretty short that he only stays on for a brief moment, and that could be represented by this thread here. But I'm not really sure. So that's really all I got. That's my analysis. If you found something different or have a better explanation for some of these unknowns, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and hopefully together we can decipher this labyrinth of a song. Definitely check out Tigra Namasian's new album, The Call Within, available August 28th. I'm super excited for it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more. I put out a video like this every Monday, and you're not going to want to miss the next one. Thank you for watching, and I, uh, I need some sort of sign-off. Uh, Detective Holmes is on the case.